Since I've done about all I can do with the water pump for now, because the marine store is closed, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. Now, I've changed the oil on my car when I was in high school, 1988. No, it was a Delta 88, Oldsmobile Delta 88 diesel, made in uh, 1980, I think it was. Um, so I'm familiar with the process, um, but this is a little trickier. Uh, I can't get under the engine to remove the deadpan bolt. I mean, I can remove the deadpan bolt, I just won't have anything to collect the oil. So I'm going to be siphoning it out of the dipstick hole. And this is uh, how I'm going to be doing it. Okay. So I bought this gadget at uh, Harbor Freight. Okay, again, no endorsements. Uh, but you hook one orange hose up to the uh, out port there, and uh, my empty milk or empty uh, uh, distilled water bottle is going to be collecting the oil. And this goes all the way back. Let me see if I can get back here and show you. Now notice the orange tube isn't going to fit down the dipstick hole, so they have a siphoning tube that comes with the uh, with the product. And if I didn't pull it out. There it goes, right in there. So, this is the tube, and the dipstick tube is right down there. And, uh, messy job, I've got oil in my hands again. Uh, so, here we go. Alright. work. Not too big a mess. Okay, here it goes. There's something.
Okay. <sighs> this sucks. This is not easy to use at all. First of all, the uh, tube is kinked, and which makes it very difficult to know when you put it into the engine if the opening is far enough down so that it's sucking on oil or on air. So you heard me pumping the first time, it was just sucking on air and spitting crap out. Also, I shoved this down the dipstick tube and I remember it being longer than it is now. I'm really uh, scared that it broke and it's stuck inside the engine. I, God, I hope that's not what happened. This is the product. Um, not nearly as much as I thought it was going to be. And I'm not sure, I need to check the manual to see what the recommended amount of oil is. It may be that it was just really low on oil and the previous owner wasn't keeping track of it, which really concerns me uh, because that means that he wasn't maintaining it. Um, I don't know, we'll see. But as you can see, there's a huge mess here. Much, much profanity was uttered, uttered. and uh, so I'm going to clean up and uh, get back to you again. Okay, uh, well, the pump extractor hose is supposed to be 47 inches in length and just over 24 inches came out. So that means I broke the hose in the uh, dipstick tube and it's uh, probably half in the dipstick tube, half in the oil pan because I can still put the dipstick itself down into the tube without any trouble at all. So that sucks and uh, I started poking around on Moyer Marine, which I, what I, that's what I should have done in the first place. Apparently there is a special oil pan drain plug um, that's different than the one that I've been uh, at the starboard bottom portion of the engine. It was designed specifically to uh, use a siphoning pump in order to change the oil. Um, and it doesn't require sticking a extractor hose down the dipstick uh, tube uh, goes straight into the oil pan, which apparently makes it much, much easier. So I will be posting to Moyer Marine and seeing what those guys have to say. If I can leave it in there, hopefully it'll break down and uh, get caught in the oil filter, or if this is going to be a much, much larger headache. I really hope I don't have to uh, pull the engine out um, in order to take care of this. But We'll see. My mistake might be your gain. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing this, don't put it in the dipstick tube. <laughs> okay, till next time. The next project I need to uh, get started on or take care of is taking, uh, uh, well, getting started on the rat's nest of wires behind me, what passes for a uh, a switchboard or a fuse panel. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So, this is what I have to contend with. Uh, we've got a, some distributors here and a couple of buses. And I've also got uh, a switch panel over here, uh, in several here. So I mean, really what I want to do is get everything in one place. Uh, this just seems kind of haphazard. I, I uh, unscrewed everything because I had to remove all the paneling in order to get uh, back into the engine. So what I'm going to be doing is, and this is going to be tedious as hell, but I don't, uh, I'm not aware of another way to do this. Uh, I'm going to be taking each wire off one at a time 
tracing it, figuring out where it goes to, and uh, just on a yellow legal pad, keeping track of everything and writing it down, giving everything uh, uh, a numbered or lettered designation. Um, and once that's taken care of, what I want to try to do is uh, maybe use some PVC tubing that I'll split down the top for easy access uh, to the wiring, um, but have those uh, color-coded or, or numbered. It'll be a lot easier to look at one PVC tube and say, okay, these are the instrument wires. Then have to trace uh, each one or find a label on each one. So that's the plan, and uh, I'm going to get started right now.